judges are three in number, so that there will always be a decision. It will either be unanimous, or there will be a majority for one view. The accusation is that God has broken his covenant with the Jewish people. Who led us out of Egypt? Now we'll hear some sense. God led us out of Egypt. Another question. Why were we in Egypt to start with? Well, there was a famine, and so we took shelter. Who sent the famine? Well, the famine, we don't know much about God the sent the famine. So God sent us to Egypt, and God took us out of Egypt. Exactly, sir. And later, he sent us out of Babylon in order and that we might when learn. he brought us out of Egypt, how did he do it? By words, visions, a miracle? Moses asked Pharaoh. And when Pharaoh said no? The plagues. First, Moses turned the Egyptians' water to blood. Then God sent a plague of frogs, next a plague of mosquitoes, then a plague of flies. Then he slew their livestock, next a plague of boils. Next came the hail, which battered down the crops and even the trees and structures everywhere, except in Goshen, where the Israelites lived. And still Pharaoh did not agree. And so a plague of locusts, and then the days of darkness, and finally, what? God slew the firstborn of Egypt and led us out of Egypt. He struck down the firstborn. From the firstborn and heir of Pharaoh to the firstborn of the slave at the mill, he slew them all. Did uh, he slay Pharaoh? No, I don't think so, because later... Oh. It was Pharaoh who said no, but God let him live and slew his children instead. All the children. And then the people of Israel made their escape, taking with them the gold and silver and jewelry and garments of the Egyptians. And then God drowned the soldiers who pursued them. He did not close the waters up so that the soldiers could not follow. He waited till they were following, and then he closed the waters. And then what? Then the desert, ultimately the promised land. No, the promised land was it empty, a new place, uncultivated. No, no were as is written. When the Lord thy God shall bring you into the land, you shall cast out many nations before you, nations much greater and mightier than you are. You shall smite them and utterly destroy them and make no covenant with them and show no mercy to them. He's shown us his favor. We are his people. And he gave us a king in Saul. Now, when uh, the people of Amalek of Fort uh, Saul's people, what did the Lord God command? Hmm? I ask the scholar. Crush Amalek, put him under the curse of destruction. Was Saul to show mercy to spare anyone? Do not spare Do him. Do not spare him, but kill. Kill man and woman, babe and suckling, ox and sheep, camels and donkey. So Saul set out to do this, and on the way he met the Kenites. Now these were not Amalek's people, he had no quarrel with them. He urged them to flee. And the Lord our God was he pleased by the mercy of Saul, by the justice of Saul. No, no, he wasn't. And when Saul decided not to slaughter all the livestock but to take it to feed his people, was God pleased by his prudence, his charity? No. No. He was not. He said, you have rejected the word of Adonai, therefore he has rejected you as king. Uh, so, seeking to please the Lord our God, Samuel brought forth King Agag and hacked him to pieces before the Lord at Gilgal. After Saul, there came David, who took Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah the Hittite, to himself by arranging to have Uriah killed against the wishes of God. Did 
God strike David for this? In a manner of speaking. Did he strike Bathsheba? In the sense that when they had... Adonai said, since you have sinned me, the child will die. You asked earlier who punishes a child. God does. Now, did the child die suddenly, mercifully, without pain? In chapter 12, we learned that in actual fact... Seven days. Seven days that child spent dying in pain while David wrapped himself in sack and ashes and fasted and sought to show his sorrow to God. Did God listen? The child died. Did that child find that God was just? Did the Amalekites think that Adonai was just? Did the mothers of Egypt, the mothers, did they think that Adonai was just? But Adonai is our oh, God, sure. Oh, well, point. did God not make the Egyptians? Did he not make their rivers and make their crops grow? If not him, then who? What, some, some other God? And what did he make them for? To punish them? To starve, to frighten, to slaughter them? The people of Amalek, the people of Egypt, what was it like for them when Adonai turned against them? It was like this. Today there was a selection, yes? When David defeated the Moabites, what did he do? He made them lie on the ground in lines and he chose one to live and two to die. We are become the Moabites. We are learning how it was for the Amalekites. They faced extinction at the hand of Adonai. They died for his purpose. They fell as we are falling. They were afraid as we are afraid. And what did they learn? They learned that Adonai, the Lord, our God, our God is not good. He is not good. He was not ever good. He was only on our side. beginning when, when he uh, repented that he had made human beings and flooded the earth. Why? What had they done to deserve annihilation? What could they have done to deserve such wholesale slaughter? What could they have done that was so bad? God is not good. When he asked Abraham to sacrifice his son, Abraham should have said no. We should have taught our God the justice that was in our hearts. We should have stood up to him. He is not good. He has simply been strong. He has simply been on our side. When we were brought here, we were brought by train. Um, a guard slapped my face. On their belts, they had written, Gott mit uns. God is with us. Now, who is to say that he is not? Perhaps he is. Is there any other explanation? What do we see here? His power, his majesty, his might, all these things, but turned against us. He is still God, but not our God. He has become our enemy. That's what's happened to the covenant he has made a new covenant with someone else. 